Hmm. You know, I should probably stop procrastinating to go ahead and get this video done. I mean, like, Ida's coming out in a couple of days, and I still don't have her spotlight video open. So, like, I should be the adult here and just go ahead and do it. Of course. Right, 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 right. But, I mean... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first of hopefully many character spotlights. Um, what I'm going to be doing is kind of breaking down the new characters that are coming out. And as you can see, the first new character that we have coming out is going to be Ida. Um, she should be out, what, August, they say August 15th, but probably more so August 16th um, based off time. Because like we get the patches um, like 12 o'clock midnight over here on the east coast so i'm assuming it's just gonna be august 16th uh but we'll see uh well, you know this is kind of like the first big character patch that we got so 15th 16th whatever um but what we're going to do is is that we're going to break down Ida's kit trying to give you an idea of exactly what to expect when you get her um this is not a tier list this is not a you know to get this person because they are oogle boogle damage this is not a video to tell you don't get this person because they suck this is a video just to break down what their skills and their uh, abilities do so that if she works in a team that you want to have or if she works in a strategy that you want to focus on then you will 100 percent be able to have her information broken down um since i'm not in the test servers i am going off of information that is coming off of the Taiwan server. Uh, so with that being said, I just want you to know that so the percentages and ratios could change when she comes out. Uh, this is not definitive until, you know, seen otherwise. Um, I know there are some content creators out there who do have some of this information. Even they will tell you that, you know, it's not uh, set in stone until it finally comes out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about Ida here. Um, she's a new watcher unit. Um, she's also part of the area drifters and discipline camps, and she uses a bow. So, you know, she's a range unit, range character. You've seen her in the story, so you know that she's a range character. And you do get the chance to play with her a little bit, so you get to see some of her skills. Um, her trait, uh, the way her trait works is when one of your other characters attacks a unit that is within four grids of Ida's range, she will auto attack doing physical damage. Um, as the trait levels up, it starts getting increased attack. And then when you max out the trait, you're going to get Ida's going to get like a 12% attack buff. Uh, her range goes from four grids to five grids and her physical damage increases to 40% and she can do it twice around, which means that, you know, she's going to be able to do consistently hit and do a lot of uh, attacks within, you know, as long as she stays within range of her allies. Um, so, yeah, this makes for a consistent DPS for each round. Um, her in it skill, like the, the first skill that she gets, um, it deals a shield break. It deals shield break four before dishing out 135% physical attack. If you don't know what shield break is, it's a buff that gives, it makes it so that you ignore block and it deals an additional amount of damage to anyone who has uh, the shield on them um, or a shield on them. Uh, the shield break buff is where, oh, <laughs> I already, already said that. Um, and the skill has a range of three um, so it's a, it has a range of three in a cross format, so four different directions, and it's a pretty solid skill, nice little skill to start off with. Now, like all other characters, there are two skill trees that you can go down. So the first one we're going to do is going to be her support skill tree. Uh, her, range, her rank one summons a box within one grid around her, so you can just basically just put a box down. It's a wooden box that you just put up it provides um i'm assuming some type of shielding so that you know cover 
because I do believe you get like a bonus for cover if I remember correctly. Uh, put in the comments below if you know if you get a uh, bonus for cover. I don't remember. Um, her rank 3 ability is an ally buff that hits all within 3 gets around Ida. It gives attack 3, which is a 30% attack buff, magic 2, which is a 40% magic buff, and it gives move 1, which it adds 1 extra grid for moving. And then it also, if I remember, if I'm reading that correctly, is also, if I read it correctly, it gives an immunity to debuffs that affect movement, um, canceling passive, canceling reactions, and etc. So it's an immunity debuff. Uh, is a is immunity to specific debuffs, which is pretty solid for team fights um, and just being overall just giving your team more uh, damage. The rank five skill when an ally is within one grid of Ida, she gets a forty percent reduction from attacks. Pretty solid, gives her survivability. And her rank seven is before she attacks, there's a 50% chance to inflict a 40% physical defense shred on targets. So that just makes it so that she's able to do more damage when she's attacking and hitting targets. And her rank nine gives her basic attack shield break one, which is a 15% increase to units that have shields. So she, if they have a shield, she's gonna get that 15%. And then her rank 11 gives all allies within four grids around her one point of energy and gives them the aid attack buff for one round for two hits. So if I'm assuming this correctly, is that her rank 11 will make it so that if any of her allies will have the same aid attack buff, which is the if, uh, if Ida or someone else attacks a unit, as long as that person's within range of that ally, they will attack that person. So it's a really good buff that makes it so that your allies can get extra hits in. Um, and it's up to two hits for per round, for one round. So that's a pretty solid to add extra damage in there. Um, my final thoughts on the support tree is that using her support skills gives her a decent amount of utility for her party while giving Ida the ability to dish out a nice defense shred. And if you're fighting units that have shields, well, she's gonna punish them and she's gonna pump, you know, pump out a lot more damage, which is a pretty good uh, overall if you, know, you wanna use her to go down the support tree in order to support and buff your allies. Now, her second rank tree is going to, or skill tree is gonna be her damage. Uh, so the rank one is when Ida attacks a unit with a shield, she gets a 30% attack and ignores 40% defense. Pretty solid. Um, if they have a shield, she's going to get an attack steroid and she's going to ignore the defense. So she's going to be hitting them for a lot more damage. Uh, her rank three is an instant skill that deals 20% damage all around enemies around the barrel within three grids and then leaves a fire on a three by three um so if you probably saw it on the little cut video um on my youtube shorts if you haven't I recommend you go look at it it is basically her throwing a barrel that does a three by three grid and that barrel will uh have the ability to leave fire um or fire stat of sorts around the area that wherever it lands her ring five is a reaction, which is a counterattack. Uh, pretty solid. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, attacking on turns that are not your own, which we'll talk about that later. And uh, rank seven is when allies are within one grid of Ida, she gets a 15% attack increase. And after she attacks, she can move two more spaces. So as long as she's around her allies or at least one ally within a grid, she's gonna get an attack buff. So Ida kind of always wants to be around somebody who's gonna be able to compliment her and is gonna be able to dish out more damage or to support their damage. Um, to support the, you know, their damage. So if you got like one really strong person and then you have Ida, she's gonna be able to support and add on to extra damage on there as long as she's within that range. Or if your Ida is gonna be your strong DPS, um, having another DPS around her is gonna you know, cause extra damage. And then her rank nine gives her basic attack uh, a dispel for two buffs. So pretty solid for units who buff themselves up. Her rank nine auto attacks are going to basically allow you to remove those buffs. And then her rank 11 deals 120% physical damage with a, with 
a five grid range. If the target is within one grid of Ida, it deals an additional 10% attack. So basically, if the person is right in front of her, it's gonna give a 10% attack or if they're further away from her, it's gonna just give the regular 120% uh, physical damage, which is pretty decent. Um, it's kind of made so that, since she uses a crossbow, it's kind of made so that, again, you know, when you're up close in her face, she deals some pretty significant damage. And still, she deals some pretty good damage when she's far away. So my final thoughts on that tree is that her damage tree is amazing for single target focus. Even though she does have that small barrel AOE with her rank three skill, her biggest damage output is going to come from her single target uh, attacks. Her basic changing to remove debuffs is pretty solid as well as she um, can continue to punish uh, her focus in the target. So she's definitely just that above all, just a single target burst damage dealer, damage DPS. Um, she's great for it. Um, if you're looking for somebody that does that single target burst damage, she's the one. Uh, in her early game, if you have the steel crossbow that ignores the fence, uh, I would definitely give her that one. But if uh, if it's like the rank five, like if you get her up to rank five, you know, she gets that, no, I'm sorry, not her, the bow. If you get the bow up to rank five, it ignores 25% defense, which is pretty solid. But uh, of course, later on, if you get a hold of the bow that ignores, uh, if you get a hold of a bow that ignores the fence or does more damage on turns, not hers, like later on legendary stuff, then I would probably recommend doing those uh, especially the bow i think there is a bow out right now that when so when someone does damage that's not on their turn it gives like a 20 percent bonus um i could be wrong on that but just you know if you know what i'm talking about put it down below and if you at least get her three stars even if you don't get her five stars if you get her up to three stars um you can you know, that's when she starts doing the aid attack where she attacks twice per turn instead of once per turn so one star two star is once per turn three four five she gets the attack twice per turn uh which is pretty solid this is of course again i'm not saying to keep pulling extra copies of her so that you can get her three stars as we know you can farm the stars in the dungeon uh but i will in the crossing world but if you once you get her up to that three star her damage output is going to be a little bit better um when it comes to trinkets and you want to get the true lens it's the best one it's like the best one for any archer um when you get it maxed out you get like five percent physical attack and when attacking from highlands it gives 20 percent crit rate it's the best one out right now for any archer right now um you get a free one by doing the um the elysium quest the, the one where you have to do the deployment, development and stuff. I can't remember, the Memento, the Memento quest. You get a free one in a high, little bit of a higher rank so you can have one, um, but it's gonna be the best for any archers. And then for Taros, you definitely wanna give her the destruction of the tower, which gives the 20% damage increase when it's not the attacker's turn. And this is because with Ida, she's gonna be attacking twice when you get her to rank three, let's say you get her at to rank three, she's going to be attacking twice. That's not on her turn. And if she gets hit, that's a counterattack. So that's three. So that's three instances and chances of her doing 20% extra damage. And then you have her doing her regular stuff where she doesn't get that 20% buff, but she still will have a significant amount of damage. So the tarot, um, that tarot destruction of the tower is going to be the best one hands down It's going to be the one that you're going to want to use and you want to get the sub sub stats that gives uh, Physical attack maybe a little survivability with max HP on it But if you can get lucky and pull physical attack on three or four of them slots, then definitely go with it um, percentage flat attacks um, Definitely good, but above all that's what you want to do and then yeah so that's pretty much it for the Ida Spotlight. Um, Ida's a fantastic unit. Uh, she has a lot of promise. So much, she has like a lot of utility and she has a lot of powerful attacks. She acts as a state, she can act as a standalone DPS, but I mean, honestly, you're gonna wanna pair her up with someone who's like another DPS in, on your team. If you can pair her with someone that's on the, is another DPS on her team, if you decide to go support or damage dealer, it's both of those are gonna be really good no matter what. 
Um, but yeah, it just depends on what kind of units you have, what kind of team you built. Uh, there are no auras right now out for drifters, but there is one for area. So if you have Dontalian, Dontalian would be really good with her because if you look at Dontalian, and we'll just go ahead over here. If you don't know, we're on Loot and Whitefield's website. Great website, I love it. But if you go to Dontalian here and you get his rank seven, this right here, it gives that 20% um, 20, 20 more damage to enemies affected by three or more debuffs. Um, so yeah, so Dontalian is gonna be really good, really good with her, especially when you have other people who's gonna be giving debuffs. And you know, Dontalian gives debuffs himself. So you getting three debuffs on somebody is significantly easy. So getting that 20% damage buff is gonna be just that much better. Uh, and that much faster that's going to stack up on top of her damage um since we don't have any drifter um we don't have any drifter leader auras except for the one that's on miguel but it doesn't give no extra bonuses or buffs but and we don't have i think we have one person for discipline if i remember correctly which is going to be coming out i don't I'm not sure when they're going to be coming out but i think it's a combi a combi um, I think it was him who has a discipline leadership aura that was pretty decent. Um, Miguel, like I said, doesn't doesn't give a decent aura. I think his is just a ten. I think his is just a ten percent. Um, yeah, it's just a ten percent. Uh, actually, his is fifteen percent and thirty percent. So that's actually not bad. It's just a simple fifteen percent and 30 percent i don't think that stacks on top of someone else who gives the 10 to 20. i'm not sure if someone has ever if someone has miguel and they've stacked and they've um used his leader aura on someone who has another standard leader aura that gives the 10 percent 20 percent if you can let me know if those stacks that'd be great i don't have miguel so i can't test it out but if you have him let me know if that works but yeah, guys, that's it. Um, that's it for the spotlight for her. If you enjoy what you see, please make sure you subscribe. Um, where we're gonna be doing sort of convalaria content, especially with these spotlights. As I get more and more comfortable and used to these, and as I get more and more better into doing these, the the content will just get better. Plain and simple. It's been so long since I've done this, so just getting back into that habit. And yeah, so above all, I'll catch you guys later in the next one. Peace.